Hello and welcome class. I'm Professor Matt. And I'm Professor Gaming Bob. And today we'll be educating you on Strixhaven, the school of mages, going to the plain of Arcavios. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we're going to be doing a giveaway. There's going to be a video down in the description. Make sure you go to that video, comment on that to make yourself eligible for the giveaway. Uh, we're at currently 91 subscribers. And at 100 subscribers is when the giveaway will happen. Check out that video and comment on it. Strixhaven is the, the most elite university in the multiverse. Uh, it features five different colleges founded by the Elder Dragons, whose name uh, bears each college. The five colleges battle it out uh, with their own unique takes on, on magic. Uh, today, we're going to learn from the best professors and explore Strixhaven's huge library. So Strixhaven is made up, like he said, of five different colleges, each with an enemy color pairing. The first one we're going to explore is Silver Quill, which is white and black. Some of you might know it as Orzov. The next college we're going to look at is Lorehold. That's red and white color combination. Some of you might also know this as Boros. The next school we're going to talk about is Prismari, which is red and blue. And some of you might know it as Is It. Uh, followed by that, we have uh, Witherbloom. Witherbloom is also referred to as Golgari. It is uh, black-green. So the next one is Quandrix, uh, also known as Simic, which is blue-green. I think that's uh, one of Bob's favorite color combinations. Absolutely it is. Golgari would be mine. Uh, there's going to be a assortment of new uh, mechanics introduced into the game uh, with Strixhaven, uh, the first of which is Magecraft. Uh, basically, Magecraft can be summed up as is whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, something will happen. Um, that's, the, that's the generic version of Magecraft. For instance, Professor Onyx, also known as Liliana, um, she, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell, she uh, causes each opponent to lose two life, you gain two life. Something to note here, for, there's an Easter egg actually on this card for those who aren't aware. If you look just beside her head, behind the sheen, of, or behind that sheer curtain, you'll see Liliana's headdress. You're talking about the, the, the golden arc, basically? Mm -hmm. That's li if, if you look at uh, Liliana's typical art previously, she's usually wearing that headdress. So she's almost like a professor in disguise here. Right, right. But yeah, she actually, actually she is Liliana. Yeah, she's ref, um, for whatever reason she's retreating to this school and taking up this persona uh, or this uh, alternate identity as Professor Onyx. Uh, it's more lore than we can get into at the, for this video, but so next we have Learn, which is going to be a new mechanic where you can reveal a lesson card from outside the game, put it into your hand, or you can discard a card to draw a card. Um, Understand that this mechanic is not going to work in the commander format because you can't have a sideboard. You can't pull cards in from outside the game in the commander format. Also, as a clarification, because um, when I read this from outside the game, to me, it means like in my play binder, in my fat pack, in yeah. my buddy's deck. But outside the game in this reference, um, the actual rules for it is side deck, like sideboard. So when you're learning... One of the lessons cards that we were referencing. Um, this is a lesson card that we have available here. Uh, so if you had this in your sideboard, if you learned, you grab this as your lesson card. So this isn't technically a new mechanic. A lesson is not a new mechanic. It is a card type that is necessary for the learn mechanic. So this is a card type you can actually have in your deck. You don't necessarily need to use it as a lesson that was learned, you can put these in commander decks and use them for their ability, like the scry and draw a card. You just can't pull this in from outside the game in a commander deck. Right, right. And you can't, you can't um, search it by learning from your deck. It has to be from outside the game, no matter right. what. Right, you can have both lesson cards and learn cards in your commander deck. Just the only benefit that you get from the learn is that loot ability where you can draw a card. It's definitely interesting. It makes sideboarding uh, a bit more of a, you know, a thought process, which is cool. I like interacting in, in different ways. So that's 
And finally, Bob, you can talk about the next card here. This is the, the last uh, new mechanic that's been added in. So Adrix and Nev Twin Casters has to be my favorite card from this new set, and it comes with the Ward ability. Now, the Ward ability is sort of self-protection for this card, that if an opposing player wants to target Adrix and Nev, they have to pay two additional colorless mana in order to cast that spell or ability at this card. What I love specifically about this card is its bottom ability. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. This is going to be absolutely beast in Commander. It's a yeah, 2 two, sure. so it dice removal pretty easy, but it's pretty cheap casting cost at two colorless, a blue, and a green. Yeah, it's not too difficult, and I like to think of this as kind of like a budget hexproof. Um, obviously, hexproof, I think, is better in every way, but um, Ward gives kind of different interactions, which is nice. Uh, in this instance, yeah, doubling all your tokens coming into play. I love Hexproof. <laughs> hexproof Commander is, you know, at cheap casting cost would be, that would probably make this just a bit overpowered. Anybody remember Geist of St. Traft? Good card. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I do actually, I agree. I really like this card as well. And the fact that it's a Merfolk also really ties it in pretty damn well for... Uh, quite a lot of Merfolk decks in general. I, I deck, almost yeah. Po yeah, it's also a wizard, so theoretically yeah. it could be used for the party mechanic. But I really don't want to get into that today, class. Uh, yep. Yeah, unfortunately, class, we only have so much time. Um, any last thoughts about uh, Atrix, or we want to move on forward? We can move on uh, to some of the cards that that you're excited about seeing from uh, Strixhaven. Yeah, this next card is when I first read it. it a lot, not many magic cards have this reaction for me. When I first read it, I'm just like, wait, what? And then I reread it, and I'm like, huh. And then the creative juices start flowing. This is one of them, because uh, Harness Infinity, um, it's got a decent mana cost of seven, uh, but it's an instant, first of all. And it's a very simple, just a quick and easy card. You exchange your hand in your graveyard, and you exile that card, Harness Infinity. But like... There's a lot of cards you think about top decking, and you're like, I really don't want to top deck X Y Z. When you're when, when you're on the when you're on the fence and you're about to lose or whatever, these are the types of cards that can bring you back when you're when you're losing tempo. And this is and it's the colors that I love most. Golgari and uh, uh, and Orzov are two of my favorite. It's going to play very well with a lot of those self mill type decks, especially or, if you're using something like a Hermit Druid where. You just name something that's essentially not in your library and, you, and you're, you're searching for it and you just basically throw your entire library into your graveyard and then... And then <laughs> now you have a hand. And, okay, I have all of my library in my hand now. Yeah. So it's, it's certainly going to be uh, what I would qualify as a, another shenanigans card. There's a lot of shenanigans cards in the Strict Save. This is certainly one of them. Uh, the one thing I like most about this card is it kind of um, takes care of one of those taboo decks that you mentioned in a previous video where um, they like to counterspell all your cards. When you get this, counterspelling is not that big a deal because you can get all of those cards that they countered back. True. Just as long as this one doesn't get countered as well. <laughs> yeah, it would be kind of nice if this one uh, could not be countered. Considering it's a 7 mana cost, um, you can't... It is, a, it is an instant, though, so you can do it at the end of their turn. Uh, so you can use your entire turn to worry about um, you know, weeding through because if you if you you know your hand size is seven still, uh, this doesn't change that. So you're still gonna have to discard some, but that's not that bad. Uh, I like it. I really do. Then uh, one of your cards that you're uh, want to talk about today as well that you're excited about. Yeah, actually, this is one of the most exciting cards in the set for me. Um, if you like all the taxing type of cards, um, this is Wandering Archaic. It's a modal dual face card. It's a 4-4 four, four creature for 5 colors, so it can go in any color deck or color combination of decks that you want to build. Uh, and what it states is whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay 2 colorless mana. If they don't, you may copy that spell, and you can choose new targets for that spell. Uh, so it essentially functions in similar ways to some of the other taxing cards, like Ristic Study and um, Smothering Tithe. And I think it's going to add a whole new dimension and really make people sit back and contemplate if it's either worth casting the spell at the time to give you a copy of it, or you're going to start tapping out their mana for them 
to tax them from playing their own cards. I do think this will generate a lot of hate on the board. Uh, on the other side of this card, as I mentioned, it's a, a modal dual face. I think the other side is a little less um, hate generating at a table. It's a group hug card. Each player looks at the top five cards of their library, reveals a land card and or instant or sorcery card from among them, then puts the cards they reveal this way into their hand and the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order, and each player gains three life. It's only three colorless mana. Or it's three cheap. Mana. Um, but it's a group hug card. I really don't see this getting as much play as the other side of this card. But it's nice to have that flexibility with these modal dual face cards. So depending on the situation, you may want to play this side. Uh, though, again, like I said, I don't think it's going to see nearly as much play as the front side. Yeah, I think the front side, I agree. I think that this is the type of card that in standard, it might not be that Powerful, probably won't see much play, I don't think. I could be wrong. But in Commander, when you have multiple players, so it's whenever an opponent, so any opponent. And in Commander, you're typically going to play against three other opponents. So everything they cast, they either have to pay two, or you get a copy of it. And you may. You don't, you're not forced to do it. So some cards you won't want to. Maybe there's not a... There's not a well, if, if somebody does a kill spell, there's no extra target, you don't want to do it. It certainly is an anti-storm deck mechanic. This is really, really good for removal for tokens, um, for little pingers, for like mono red. I don't know how popular mono red is anymore in standard or in commander, um, but I know commander. merfolk have pretty low costing. Yeah, this is definitely a good removal. Sure. There's a lot of removal in Strixhaven. Now, this is a good <laughs> card because uh, even being a sorcery, because it generates mana, it, it keeps your tempo up. It's a good card that... It allows you to continue well, tempo in. Instant, it would be broken. Well, yeah, don't. That's why it's a sorcery. <laughs> if it be, if it was yeah. an instant, it'd be absolutely just, it'd be just disgusting. Oh yeah, if it was an instant, this would be, this I, would be a hundred dollar card. I do agree. But it's I, a very I, good I card. Think, I think it's perfect with its balance of being a sorcery. I think it's almost a little op that it, it should have just been creatures, but they didn't. They said permanent. Yeah. That means enchantments. That means equipment. Oh, my Tabalt's, my Tabalt's fiend blooded. My two two mana complains walker. <laughs> that would blow him up too. Yeah, he'd be dead. Oh no! So uh, again, you know, I think this is a really strong card. Yeah, and there's uh, the the nice thing that I'm noticing about like the majority of these cards that we've looked at, and this isn't really something that I've looked at in Magic cards in the past, honestly. A lot of the times I'll look at the full art of things. Like uh, my favorite lands from back in the day when I played a ton was the full art Zendikar lands. And at the time, the only thing that was close to it that I remember were unhinged lands, the full art basic lands. Since then, they've released all kinds of different arts for all these lands and all the cards. So now there's full art of like almost everything. And what it reminds me most is when people would do the erasing of the card and they would paint on the cards. A lot yeah, of these absolutely. cards look yeah. that way and look they look beautiful. The art is something that I never cared that much about. But as I look at every one of these cards, Almost every one of these cards look amazing, like just beautiful, good art, and they look even better in the full art line, or the full art or, or uh, unbordered. Or Extended. there's seven different versions, you know. Speaking of which, in this set, we've got the mystical archives, which have their own unique art flavor to them, and even amongst the mystical archives, you have the Japanese variants, uh, which will have the same cards with a very unique. Japanese art style to them, like the Demonic Tutor here. Uh, th these are going to be some of the most sought after cards, certainly the chase cards in the set for sure. Uh, and, and the last difference that I'm aware of, they're going to be doing some foil etch treatments on some of the cards. I'm not exactly sure which ones are going to get the foil etch treatments. I don't think they've uh, spoiled all of those yet. But you see on the screen here, uh, especially with Matt's little pet card mortality spear there. Spear there uh, this should be similar to what you'll find for the foil etch treatments of a lot of the cards. And I know that the Mystical Archives are also supposed to get um, foil etch treatment. I don't know exactly how they're going to look. These are just some of the normal non-Mystical Archive cards in the set. This, the art style of this, I feel like is a whole nother level of what I'm used to. Uh, but yeah, these, these arts, um, they're not even full art. They're not even extended border, but I still think they're beautiful because of how they colored the text box, how they 
it, it all kinds of just i mean there's like the, the the outline of the card is is colored in the in the multicolored cards they're i think they're very well done they've done a great job recently over the last year i would say with really changing up their artistic expression on the cards um they're they're some of the most beautiful cards that i've seen in all of magic's history uh and there's just some really amazing artwork that's going to come out especially in the mystical archives very different very unique stylings in Strixhaven. So there's a lot of great and unique things coming out of Strixhaven. Well, class, that concludes today's lesson on our various schools from the Strixhaven School of Mages over in Arcavios. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we appreciate everyone that comments and uh, interacts with us in the videos. We kind of strive on that, so the more that happens, the better. And uh, don't forget to check out the, uh, the links in the description for that giveaway. Have a wonderful day, everybody.